Let's talk about 2024's The Exorcism, or maybe not. Do we even need to do this review? Because... Truth be told, we only watched this because Chloe Bailey was in it. And we thought, like, how bad could it really be if Russell Crowe was also in it? Well, it was pretty bad. I'm Height. And I'm Cherie. And you've discovered Axiom Amnesia. We want to thank all of the supporters who helped to make this video possible. If you want your name to appear alongside these contributors, make a one-time donation via Cash App or click the thanks button on this video, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash axiomamnesia or become a channel member by clicking the join button to enjoy all of the benefits of becoming a monthly subscriber. So this really won't involve any heavy spoilers because if you've seen any movie like The Exorcist, not to be confused with The Exorcism, which is this movie, then or any movie like it, then you've already kind of like seen yeah. this movie. So what happens is somebody um, gets uh, or a girl, right? A mm -hmm. lot of the times <laughs> gets uh, possessed by the devil right. or a demon or something. Uh -huh. And somebody gets possessed and then they have to call in a priest to come and exercise them. Yes. I think it's what it's called. And to basically cast out the demon or the devil. And then they end up getting possessed. <laughs> and then they got to figure out a way to unpossess them. And then that's how the movie ends. Um, you know, all these that, that's how those movies go. Right. So in this case, this particular movie, The Exorcism, uh, that came out in the summer of 2024, is about a troubled actor played by uh, Russell Crowe, who um, begins to exhibit these disruptive behaviors while he's shooting a horror horror film. And his estranged daughter wonders if he's slipping back in his, into his past addictions or if there's something more sinister at play. So this whole That's thing. That's what they were trying to do? Yes. is on. Is, so like the film takes place kind of like is part of a movie set, right? And, you, you know, it's the set of a movie that is an exorcist type movie. They were filming this movie. Yes. They were literally <laughs> filming this movie in the movie. But let me just cut to the chase and say... If you like, you know, supernatural type thrillers and stuff like that, and you haven't seen movies like The Exorcist, The Omen or whatever, it won't be ruined for you. If you have seen those kind of movies, then eh, I mean, uh, I don't even know what to what What so, can I say positive about what this I can movie? say positive about the movie is I like the premise, you know, because they show this big set. I don't know how movies are really made. Nobody has invited us to their set to film the movie and stuff anymore or on scene. So y'all could go ahead and do that. Hit us up. But they show basically the making of the movie. They got this nice little set and stuff. And, you know, I like that premise that, OK, they're making this movie and then somebody in the movie probably could get uh you know, possessed, right? Yeah. But to, you know, put that on top of with another exorcism, have to exercise that out. I don't know. I just was, I was more interested in that aspect of this guy. He's going to make a movie again because he's like a star who's fallen out of disgrace, right? He had an addiction problem basically. And then now he's getting another chance to act again. Yeah. That's Russell Crowe's character. And that's what happened. And I kind of like that. Yeah. But then when you start throwing in the other stuff, then I'm like, why is why are you doing this stuff? Because there are a lot of, you know, different tropes and cliches that you have to abide by when you're doing something like that. Yes. So how do you feel that Chloe Bailey's um, acting was in this film? It wasn't bad, you know. Yeah. She I kissed a girl and she might have liked it. <laughs> I think this is a pretty good, um, you know. It was she, better she, than uh, Warm. <laughs> yeah. Her and Swarm. Like, well, I'm not going to say she was bad in Swarm, but just how they opened her up role, with her cheeks getting clapped like yeah. that, you know. Yeah, so Swarm, the, you know, but like I think that, you know, Chloe Bailey is like a legit actress. You know, she was on Grownish and stuff. She's, I mean, she was a kid actor. She played uh, the young version of Beyonce in that movie Beyonce was, it temptation? was in. The, the, the fighting, fighting temptations, temptations, I think it was, and with Cuba Gooding Jr. I think he was in that. Uh, so anyway, so, you know, it's she's legit. And she's, I think, has a talent in this area. And I was really hoping to see her have a larger part because her part really wasn't that yeah, big Yeah, it wasn't in that movie. yard. 
you know it wasn't that big so she i guess she was supposed to be like a famous singer or something or at least mm-hmm. a singer that the daughter knows russell crowe's daughter. almost like her role right i'm a yeah. singer and i'm an actress <laughs> and then they meet on the set right mm-hmm. because of nepotism he could bring his daughter on to work as a pa yeah. on the set and you know one of the early things they do is oh let me show you the cold room i don't know what a cold room is maybe I'm still y'all know trying to figure it out and it's basically another it's a room that's very cold and I guess maybe they want to see your breath because that's how they do in these movies, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a set there in a bed, like, just like The Exorcist. And that's where all of this happens, right? Yeah. But then when they do that, I'm like, okay, this is where it's going to, the uh, climax is going to happen. Like, why you bring us into this big old, always cold, eerie room, <laughs> you know? But besides that, I'm like, why, if this is about an exorcism or whatever, and why do I care about his past of all that they tried to set up? Yeah. Which was basically the story, right? The story was about this guy's past and his relationship with his daughter and addiction and getting it back into acting and people not believing in him that he can do it. And like, that's, that's where it is. But I guess that's probably nowadays probably couldn't be a draw. Right. Yeah. So they like, let's make it an actual exorcism movie. Yeah. And I mean, I think that it's 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 going to be hard to make any movie that's like this because so many movies have been made. How can you give it its special so twist? Stop making them. Whatever. And it, it's so so to that end, it is tough. You know, the other part is because we have now seen quite a few movies as of recent um that have actors who were really at the in the A list or actors in their in their prime, like Russell Crowe, and you know we just saw something um, with um, Kevin Costner yesterday, and you know it's just like all right, so the actors are older, they're allowed to age and everything, and 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 we can have great um, films yeah. that they're in. But the question I have is, why is it that the actors who were considered like these? action hero types or heartthrob types when they, you know, as they age and then they come in these movies, they don't seem to select what I think are great movies for them to do in their, you know, as they've aged. Right. But yet you have like Al Pacino and other other actors who but I, I especially think of Al Pacino and others who, as they aged, like picked wonderful, amazing like what? roles to be in. Like um, obviously Al Pacino. To the the first time I saw him was in The Godfather, and then, you know okay. that's like a 1972 okay. film. And then later you see him in the 80s in movies like um, what's that movie? That Everybody was still loved? close to The Godfather. Ten years later. Okay, so ten years later, then you see him in Scent of a Woman, or was that? No, uh, I, don't know. I always uh, well, let me just. So was it in the 2000s? Because we're comparing something that's probably 30 years later, right? So Russell Crowe. Okay, know, all right. Let's say 30 years, 30 years later. So 30 years later. So something in 2000 ish. All right, uh, The Devil's Advocate. Kid. I thought that was a great movie. Okay. Um, and that was Al Pacino, you know, and he, you know, he made good fellas and you know, he was in a yeah. lot of movies that I think continue to be good. It doesn't mean he didn't have bad movies along the way. I also But how do you but, know if a movie's gonna be good or not? Right? Because like if you're reading it and it's compelling, oh, this guy and his backstory, and then the movie gets made, then that's something totally different, right? That's I think hard. the outcome it isn't always what's written on the page too you know because a week the same could be said for the young ones too chloe bailey is it that she's not getting roles and she has to accept a role like this and then when you're younger you may not really know about the history of film like that to be like okay all these exorcism movies were already made well this is i mean somebody is getting paid over there beyonce and them's team that chloe bailey is on right but i don't think they manage her entire career i think she signed as a musical artist but what i'm saying my point is young people probably haven't seen these movies right so that's an audience for them you know, maybe we, uh, maybe the entire people in our age uh, demographic is, isn't a target, right? Some of us, we still like it. It doesn't matter. As long as I get this certain feeling of jump scares and some supernatural stuff happening, then I've enjoyed myself, right? Yeah. And then other was like, okay, we've seen this over and over and I'm looking for something different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, that's true. So maybe I'm being a little hard. You can't always know if the film is going to be amazing. And film choice is important. I, you know, when when I don't like the movie, 
I don't blame the actors because, you know, there was... Unless they can't act. Unless they can't act. But, like, it's not the fault of the actors because truly it is the filmmaker, the director's responsibility to bring this film together yeah. to help select the right actors for these roles. Although the, the director usually doesn't have just yeah, complete, cast, you know, carte uh, blanche to uh, have only who they want, but they have some level of influence. Yeah, cinematographers um, and all that. Because, you know, a movie I would think about, uh, what was the name of that movie we just did? Not another church movie. Yes. Not another church movie to me was an example of that. You did have people who were, you know, decent actors who were in that. Uh, you also have other movies where you got decent actors, but the movie is just not good. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I don't I don't hold that against the actor because maybe they just don't have a way of knowing, you know, you don't know what hits the cutting floor, all of that. Yeah. So and like think about it. If it's sometimes it's like, oh, I only do certain budget films. Right. But a lot of times the greatest films are the lower budget ones. Right. Where you don't know. I just going to have to do this. And if it turns out to be a cult classic or just a classic in general then bam i struck gold right yeah so yeah well, a and, lot of times less is more you know yeah sometimes but uh, certain things you need a big enough budget right yeah. so if you're going to do something like this and you're trying to do i don't know what they had you know the typical contortionist type of thing where your body shouldn't be doing things and bones cracking all sorts of ways right you might have to have you know Somehow, maybe you could just do it with sound, but with certain things of blood and all that stuff, you might need a little more budget to do that and to maybe set up a big fake set that's on the set. And I don't even know how you even begin to start filming something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's I it's it's a lot of money. A lot of investment goes into it um, or whatever. But, you know, according to the exorcism of to according to some of the first couple of weekends when the film came out, because um, it was released on June 23rd of 2024, um, it made about uh, it had an estimated budget of 22 million. It made about three point five million. Well, let's see. That's all the overall. gross worldwide was about five point five million. Yeah. The gross worldwide was five point five million. So, you know, they got a ways to go to make back the if they really had a budget back. of twenty two million. Like I would almost okay. say this movie failed. So the <laughs> opening was two point five million. The, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. just in the US. Yeah, domestic. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, and maybe worldwide by now. I don't know what it's No, made. worldwide is five point five and domestic is three point five. Okay. So, so you know, they they got a ways to go. And, you know, most of that money is going to come in that first part. It's, yeah. yeah. So if it don't start off with making good money, it's not going to really continue, right? Because that's how people are gauging whether or not something is good. Oh, did a bunch of people go see it? Did it make a bunch of money, you know? And then, yeah, that's usually how it goes. But it could be one of those cases where, like, Scarface, right, didn't do well at the box office. But, mm -hmm. you know, look at it. Now it's just a classic. And, you know, there are a lot of movies that don't do well that are good movies. That doesn't, you know, whether it does well at the box office doesn't determine whether it is a good movie. Yeah. But in this case, this was a bad movie. You know, like I read a couple of reviews and they were like, I can't get my time back. And truth be Bruh. told, how we wound up in this movie is that we were looking for, you know, things in the theater to watch. It was what was out. We were like, OK, yeah. Chloe Bailey's in it. Let's check it out. And then I'm like, OK, Russell Crowe. All right. Yeah. You know, but. And, I don't think it was that bad. It is not a waste of time. So the thing is, to me, most movies that I watch has a story that I can follow and the sound is good enough and the lighting and, the you know, the cinematography, the visuals are good enough. Right. So if we sit around and I tell you a story, yo, man, the other day, you know, people do story, story times. The other day I went over here. I done this and that, you know, then I've didn't waste my time listening to your story even if it's not the most compelling story or one of the most compelling stories i ever told it just needs to meet basic storytelling guidelines yes right but so my but my also my other gauge is like would i pay money for this movie hmm. or am i gonna go wait for it on dvd well not dvd streaming whatever DVD. you know I, I don't know i just like jump back 20 years in time but anyway would i wait for it to come out on some other format or am i going to the theater okay. and pay money for it and this is a movie that i would not pay money for we did technically pay money for it but we have a pass so we could see whatever we want to see right so but yeah. would you pay money for this movie in the no, theater? no but 
if I was having a movie night out and nothing else was out that I wanted to see, yeah. then you're forced to, right? Because that's yeah. how that okay. works. Yes, but it wouldn't be a movie I'm like, let's go no, see. No. You know, if nah. I see the trailer or whatever, I'm not going to be like, hey, I want to go see a movie called The Exorcism first off and yeah. then a movie about an exorcism. Uh, yeah, that's yeah not going to happen. And then after watching it, I'm definitely not going to go pay to see it. <laughs> And, and, and after watching it, like I'm, I probably would never even watch it on streaming. Yeah, I'm like, not watching this I, again. Yeah, but I think it's good that uh, Chloe Bailey is getting rose. I do too because her sister was doing very well. You know what I'm saying? And you know, her music career ain't popping like it probably as she would hope it would. You know, so she needs some roles and stuff too. You know. Well, you know, and speaking of the Bailey sisters, you know, I. I feel like they have far more talent than Bruh. they're seeing in terms of success. You know, we saw Halle Bailey in both the color purple that just came out earlier in the year. Was that this year? 2024? 2023. Uh, 2023. Okay. Late last year, Christmas. Uh, and then, we, you know, her sister's in this movie. Her sister was also in Swarm. You know, so they're getting roles and stuff. And I mean, the big thing for uh, Halle was being, you know, the little mermaid. Right. But, their music isn't, you know, jumping off yeah. like you said. It's, they well, are you know, musicians. They you know? are and very talented just all the way around. And I think they should have a lot more success than we actually see them having. Yeah. And, you know, I just I feel like they needed they need and needed maybe some better guidance in some ways, you know, in terms of navigating how to, you know, transition between being the, uh, you know, a singer actress type of thing. And then also just some better guidance. I, you know, I really don't know what would make it better for them, but I want to see them, you know, really, they should be at the top, top billing, you know, at least together as a duo um, yeah. musically. And, I, I just think bad decisions have been made, especially yeah. branding, bad branding decisions have been made. And then, you know, um, Hallie had the baby and stuff like that. And so she might have been a little slowed down. Right. Yeah. Having the baby. But she still was out there, you know. Yeah. So I want to see them do really well. But anyway. So, so somebody exorcism. else who's notable to me was Adam Goldberg. I think I know that guy. Uh -huh. You know, he's been in some stuff. But the. Uh, I don't know if I know these other people. But well, a lot you know of know Russell Crowe. Yeah, I know Russell Crowe, but that's the three of the, the ones we yeah. named. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I know the other people. I don't. Because I don't know why. Sometimes I just may know them not by name, you know, but whatever. You know what's weird? I don't know why I kept getting the feeling of the movie Rust. I know I haven't seen that movie yet, but I'm aware of it because, you know, Rust is the movie that Alec Baldwin is, was filming. And then they had the accident where um, I think she was the assistant director. Was that a was Western shot? I think it's kind of a Western, oh. but she was shot and killed. I don't know what it is. And maybe it's that the main actress here, the daughter, she reminds me of the uh, what do they call the person who handles the guns? The. Oh, gosh. Armorer? The armorer, yes, on Rust. Maybe that's what it is. Because she looks like how she looked when the uh, event happened. Because I remember watching the, um, you know, the interrogation of what happened after. So basically, if you don't know what happened on Rust, it was a situation where there was a live bullet or whatever you call it inside of the gun. And then when Alec Baldwin was playing around with the gun and preparing himself for the scene, he wound up shooting and um, she subsequently died. The uh, one, the director, I think she was assistant director or she was some, you know, one of the crew um, uh, that she died. And yeah. so now, you know, Alec Baldwin was charged with murder at one point or manslaughter, and then he wasn't charged and then he was recharged. But in the meantime, the Rust Armor, I can't think of her name right now, but she, you know, has gone through trial and she's actually been found guilty and sentenced at this point. So she's um, currently serving her time. But this is this look, this blonde oh, yeah. look well, is how she looked. That's I mean. how they make every character, you know, hmm. blind hair, whatever, light blue eyes. But OK, I do know David Hyde Pierce. He's in there. He was oh, yeah, now okay. in um, Frasier. That's how I probably know him. <laughs> I didn't recognize him as David Hyde Pierce in here. You know, yeah, I remember that's him what from I'm like saying. the nineties. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I it's we're getting older, everyone's getting older. Yeah. Right. So 
a lot of people, you know, they look different. They don't look the way that we know them. Right. So if I haven't seen you in 10, 15, 20, 30 years, then I'm not going to necessarily just be able to pinpoint. But like, I know that guy. Yeah. So then uh, the other thing I was thinking is they do um, kind of tackle the LBGTQ um, subject matter in here a little bit. Yeah. And I do like that they're able to I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm not trying to give anything away, but I, I will say that I I think it's. I like that it's being normalized, that different uh you know, the lifestyles, all of that stuff is now just regular. You know what I'm but saying? Like, it's not, although so it was some is, derogatory things involved in this yeah, film with, but, related to it. Yeah, but what I see, it's like, well, whatever, give it away or not. But, okay, you have, I think it's normalized now, at least in Hollywood and lots of places, right? And in lots of communities or cultures where, you know, the LGBTQ plus, right, is... It's nothing to have that in film, but I don't know if it's, you know, the interracial relationships is at that level or the uh, mm. gay, bisexual, lesbian interracial relationships are at that level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, yep. you know, all of that. So, like, I I feel like I have to have two uh, scales of rating these films. You know, I have the Cherie scale, which is a lot harder because I don't like most movies when I and, and so everything would be like a one or a two if I just gave it my actual, you know, yeah. rating. But what I, I try to think about what I think and what I am pretty sure other people would like and this movie if i rate it on the general audience's rating i would say i would give this movie like a three out really? of five yeah it would be a three out of five like you're not going to be like i hate it you know it and if you do you're like all right i spent the two hours or whatever it is not a movie that i would so recommend spending you, money in a theater for so you don't pay for a three movie no. out of five that's better than average Okay, well, I guess you're right. If two point five is <laughs> yeah. average, okay. Now I gotta go back and re reconsider my. I just my think that no scale. one gives zero stars, so maybe we gotta adjust the scale from maybe half a star to five, and then figure out what the middle is, or from one to yeah, five, but, but which like, would only leave four. I, the bottom line is, I wouldn't pay money for this movie in the theater unless you're like, you know, yeah, probably twenty years old, and you just like, yeah, okay whatever yeah. you like the slashers you know they it might appeal i think for a more mature audience you really ain't gonna like it you're more likely to have seen other movies this will remind you of and y y it's just gonna be you yeah know, a letdown right i don't think i've seen any like real striking shots or anything else or except seeing the set i really yeah. that was a good plus is seeing how the set of this house was and i was like dang i, I want to like, go is, to a set is this how they film for movies you yeah know? <laughs> yeah so i mean that was i think that's cool it thing. But, but yeah so what would you rate it i don't know i'll probably give it like a two <laughs> 1.52 you know it's just mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe 2.5 meets standards, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So let us know if you've seen this film, what you thought about the film and whether or not you went to the theater inside or did you watch it, um, you know, at home once it is streaming, if you're watching this at a later date. And as usual, if you made it this far, type cold room in the comments so we'll know you're one of the real ones who stick to the end. And be sure to watch the video that's on the screen right now. Make sure you're subscribed to all of our other channels because we do have other channels with more videos on them. And please do us a favor and consider joining our Patreon. Links are in the description.